Potential cyclone impacts on the way for Australia and the Philippines on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for April 7th. Right now around the world it does look like we have a new tropical cyclone, Invest 98S appears to now be of a condition where we can call it a tropical cyclone, the 13th of the year so far and we are code blue for this system and the one in the western pacific which we'll show you in a moment. 56 days until Atlantic hurricane season begins and things are looking pretty quiet there. As you would of course expect, we do have a little bit of severe weather along the east coast right now though, but generally the tropics are very quiet. In the areas of interest then, the western pacific there, we've got a 50% system uh, that we've designated which will be progressing northwestwards towards the central part of the Philippine Islands. And then we've got this tropical storm Invest 98S, uh, which has really shown itself decently in the last few hours with convection and is gradually moving towards the west into the Timor Sea to the northwest of Darwin, Australia. That system will continue to move southwestwards uh, and eventually could threaten, severely threaten, the coast of Western Australia. In the Indian Ocean proper, there's not much going on now. It's uh, pretty dormant in the southwest Indian Ocean leading some to think that the season may be over, but there is a little bit more time yet, so we'll have to wait and see. Latest satellite imagery around the world, take a look at the red areas, those are your hot spots for any major uh, rainfall right now and potential for flash flooding, you can quite clearly see 98S there on that chart, uh, affecting or just off the coast of the top end of Australia. And here's a look at the visible satellite imagery as we enter daylight hours locally and you can see both of these systems presented here. The one at the bottom there obviously that's an Invest 98S and at the top there a decent amount of convection. It does almost look like a tropical cyclone all on its own as well near Palau, uh, the other system in the western pacific. Here's a close up of Invest 98S, uh, decent cloud tops which looks like they may have been sheared to the west there but we are getting indications. Uh, not direct indications albeit but it does look like it may now be sustaining 40 mile per hour winds and a pressure of around 1002 millibars and that would make it a tropical cyclone with that convective pattern just about able to sustain itself. Uh, not fully sure myself whether it is a tropical cyclone or not but certainly it is very close as we look at this imagery well to the minus 80s in terms of cloud top convection most of the rain is staying away from land at this moment in time uh, so that's some good news there and here is the supposed center of that western pacific system you can't really see much there uh, but you can see some convection up there the top left hand side that's all on the force 13 website as are the sea surface temperatures which you can see here and the eastern pacific warming up already getting up to around 30 degrees in a few spots south of mexico in the atlantic uh, the Western Caribbean is the hot pot, uh, the hot spot there, around 27 to 28 degrees Celsius to the south of Cuba towards Jamaica, and in the North Indian Ocean, temperatures there looking pretty decent in the Bay of Bengal, up to and above 30 degrees in some parts there, down into the deep tropics, and in the Southwest Indian Ocean, the equ equatorial region there, extremely warm, uh, but still warm SSTs extending right down into the Mozambique Channel on either side of the island of Madagascar and over Mauritius and La Reunion. Look at that though, that massive warm pool off the coast of Western Australia of over 30 degrees Celsius waters pushing close to 32 there. Prime real estate for a major tropical cyclone, which is exactly what the GFS is predicting right now. And in the South Pacific there, also good conditions favorable we don't usually get strong storms this late into the season but certainly can't rule that out and in the western pacific we're looking at this here warm sea surface temperatures where that invest is uh, they'll cool off a little bit as it gets closer to the philippine islands but staying around 28 degrees for the duration 
Sea surface temperature anomalies look like this, warmer than usual slightly in the Philippine Sea. Look at that enormous warm area though off the coast of Peru and South America in general there. Extreme heat compared to average and that could uh, be a harbinger of this possible El Nino event that we might be looking at later in the season. Interesting to see what comes of that. Looking down into the South Pacific, oceanic heat content still very favourable in the deep tropics and still decent amounts extending down as far as Fiji and Vanuatu and into the Coral Sea there. In the North Pacific, in the Eastern Pacific even, uh, still look at those decent colours starting to appear there into the greens. Uh, 100 there on the OHC chart and that is more than what we saw at the peak of last season and the Western Pacific doing well too. Computer models then, this is the GFS prediction for the next uh, five days and this depicts this potential system uh, beginning to develop as it approaches the Philippine Islands. Looks like there's competing vortices there actually, uh, but that's the next five days. The system is slow to develop according to this model run um, and it doesn't really get itself going until near the end of that run, but suffice to say it will be a threatening system for the coast of the Philippines um, when we get closer to that mark. Now this is interesting what happens with our new tropical storm. GFS wants it to do a big loop round and then starts to progress further towards the west and once it does enter the Indian Ocean proper it really gets going there, uh, blows up in size and in its intensity just drawing the track there of uh, the GFS projection. Uh, really interesting loop there at first and then continuing westwards and then really blowing up to a category one equivalent status there on the Sappho Simpson scale. Uh, rainfall expectations, we're going to try and incorporate both of these systems because they both could be locally uh, significant rainfall producers. Uh, the estimates have increased for the coast of Australia, the Kimberley particularly, uh, where we could now see up to 12 inches of rainfall in some areas not far from Wyndham, uh, looking there at around 300 millimeters that would be, and off the top end as well, still looking at possibly 200 millimeters. Up to the Philippines, you can see at the top there, uh, towards Catanduanes and towards uh, Samar, uh, potentially up to 13 inches there, that's over 300 millimeters possible for parts of the easternmost islands of the Philippines into southeastern Luzon, uh, but that is quite uncertain at the moment, and in, a, in, in just the next slide I will show you why as we enter the mid-range day 5 to 10 GFS earlier predicted that the storm would cross over the Philippine Islands but now it actually takes it away just before it reaches Catanduanes so they get tropical storm force winds but they don't get a landfall and the storm steers northwards a recurvature there uh, very usual for the time of year, uh, especially earlier on, recurvatures are more likely, and then it moves up northwards and then northeastwards, becomes a typhoon in the process as well. And take a look at this for the Australian region this tropical cyclone and you rarely see storms that get so intense on GFS model runs they usually under um, cook the model runs so this is really uh, potentially alarming news here showing an extremely powerful storm into the 900 millibar range by the time it gets close to its landfall around a 909 millibar landfall there of course that is quite long range but it is starting to get a little bit more good consistency which is increasing the stakes and the possibility that something like that could happen. You can check out the Force 13 merch store, scan the barcode on the top right hand side to take a look at all we've got including our still waiting for Hone t-shirts because we certainly are and plenty of other stuff there. We've got no silly range today so we'll just skip over that one and you can also join our discord server discord.gg slash force 13 to discuss all of those weather stories and non-tropical info as well on our Discord server. You can chat about weather wherever you are in the world. Well, on April the 7th, 1995, we had uh, another curious storm actually, um, peaking on this day as a very tight core category four there, Chloe, which was just off the coast of uh, northern 
Australia there, um, just about into Western Australia, um, looking very powerful there before I believe it struck land not too long later and weakened extremely rapidly as it did so. We also had a Marlene which was just dying down as it was continuing westwards, southwestwards through the Western Indian Ocean. Well, back to today and in the Atlantic, everyone's waiting for that first storm, Arlene. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Adrian. And in the Central Pacific, we've been waiting nearly four years now for Hone, which is almost the longest gap now in about 50 years nearly. In the Western Pacific, we have Sanvu next up. And in the North Indian Ocean, it's Mocha. Um, that's or the potential 14th storm, whichever one might arrive. We're 13 at the moment, a little bit of a slow start to the year. Of course, Freddy could account for about 10 of those storms. Ilsa next in the Australian region, Fabienne in the Southwest Indian Ocean, and Lola in the South Pacific. So we wait for those with bated breath. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night. <laughs>